they quietly died. Um, but other people were coming along and they were a little more wealthy and they were the peacocks of that period. There has always been in Britain and in other countries, there have always been men who want to be a little more flamboyant. They want to, to stand out from the crowd. And they're not necessarily brave because, you know, if you're if you're going to dress up and go out somewhere really nice, you want the, you want the man you're with to respect it, to look right. You don't want a man in jeans when you're going out dressed to kill him and you're wearing shoes that are killing you. You want them to, <laughs> to look to look good too. So there was this next lot who were coming in. And they were mostly um, they were mostly upper middle class, and, like, and they were following on the, on the, on the footsteps of the, um, the dandies who had been around earlier, who went to Savile Row and had velvet jackets, made jackets with floral patterns, uh, people who wanted to look different. Um, I don't know if you remember George Medley, who, was, who recently died. Was a, as a jazz singer, he always wore flamboyant clothes, and he was indicative of that period. Uh, old photographers like <coughs> Cecil Beaton. Um, Cecil Beaton was a dandy of the highest order. He couldn't wear the same thing twice in one week. He had black jackets, velvet jackets, silk jackets, jackets with frogging jackets. With, was, they, they were these dandies. Uh, and some, some, there was a great game moving in, although it was not acknowledged as though well. everybody knew they were going because of course it was still in Nico and those dandies were back in. The next lot who came in, there's a young lot who came in in the 60s, probably had daddy's money. And they used to go with daddy to his tailors in Savile Road, so they knew how nice things were made. Um, they knew that if you wanted a nice shirt, you went to German Street, where you had a nice shirt. Everything in those days was made to order. German Street, in those days, did not have ready-made shirts. There was not one shirt ready-made there. It was only a little bit later when some of the Michael Fish went there as an assistant selling shirts, and he said, why don't we make shirts off the head? And Savile Road changed overnight. Tom Turnbull and Asa opened the shirt, a wing of the shop with ready-made shirts, and all the other shirt shops down the road copied as fast as they could, because uh, it was the coming thing. The nice thing about all that is you know, something ready-made, you know whether you look good or not straight away. If you're having a shirt made and you get it three weeks later, or you're having a suit and you get it three months later, you've probably gone off. So this young breed were coming in, they knew what good clothes were like, they knew how much people had to spend on a suit, but they had to find a cheaper way of doing it. And um, there were even younger group who smoked rather a lot, tripped rather a lot, and uh, they opened shops in, off the King's Road, and the granny takes a trip and hung on you two places that open selling men and women's clothes, which was almost revolutionary in those days. Men and women, same dressing room. Um, and they were a curious bunch because they were very creative. They took lots of old vintage clothes, which you could buy anywhere in those days, and you'd go to any old um, I don't know, jumble sale or church sale, they would always be like silk dresses velvet pieces, fur coats, tippets, they'd all be fox thing. Um, and there would always be masses of silk scarves or art silk scarves, fake, you know, rayon scarves. Everything was available. And so all these shops used to go and buy those things and cut them and tailor them to make them into a young person. They'd take the sleeves out or remove the sleeves. There was all this stuff was happening and Granny takes a trip and hung on you had those things. And because they were based on two people in either place who actually had taste, they had the men's clothes, had quite good taste and probably well made. Hung on you had the first suits ever seen for men, well made, double breasted, wide lapels, uh, in pistachio green, bright pink, 
yellow. I'd never seen that before. And it was the 60s that let men wear pink, pink shirts. Men never wore pink. It was a woman. And um, if you wore pink, you were assumed to be gay. And it was only suddenly when, when women were buying them for their husbands in the nice places that men started to wear pink. It's odd to think that now, but that's how it was then. Um, and you would, I, I actually have to say, I've met somebody quite recently, and she must be about 80. And I was at a party, and she said to me, Jeffrey, what are you wearing? And I said, What can I wear? And I said, What are you wearing? What are you wearing? What am I wearing? And she said, I'm wearing a pink shirt. And she was 84. She, it obviously had carried on with her. Since then, 20 years later, she was still horrified by a pink shirt. <laughs>